Hey everyone, got a new tutorial for you guys today in Unreal using something we call time dilation. And what that does is that slows down or increases the time of objects. So that sphere you see there is like a what I would call a force field sphere. It is just slowing down projectiles right now. So I can run through there and nothing happens to me. And then this wall right here has a trigger that only triggers when I get near it. And what it does is it slows down everything in the world as it's exploding. So that's just kind of an example of two things we'll be creating using this. And I think you'll be able to uh, create all sorts of different things that you guys want to. So now that we've seen the effects, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, in your blueprints folder, let's just right click and create a new blueprint. And I'm just going to create a new actor class. I'm just going to call mine time bubble for a time bubble. And the reason we're doing this one first is because this is the easier one of the two to set up. So once we have this created, I'm going to add a sphere collision to our uh, viewport. And I'm going to increase the radius to, let's say, 250, something we can see in the world. And also in this viewport, I'm going to uncheck hidden in game. That way we can see the outline of where we want to test. Uh, if you have a sphere that you want to use the effect with a material applied to that, that is also fine. Uh, and then this is where we really set what's going to be slowed in our world. So right now we have this overlap all dynamic. I'm going to set that to custom. And I'm just going to ignore everything except, uh, I think world static is what projectiles are. So if you want your character to slow down when they run in this, you can check pawn, or if you want uh, any object really that you want to slow down, just overlap this bubble. But I'm just going to keep it to world static for my projectiles. Then we're going to go to this event graph, and I'm going to add two events, a begin overlap and end overlap. Uh, and what we're going to do is off of this other actor pin, we're going to make sure we drag off that other actor blue pin. And then once we have this pop up, we're going to do set custom time dilation. And the reason we drag off this other actor pin is so that this custom time dilation has a target of that actor. Because uh, otherwise, if we were to right click and use uh, set custom time dilation, it would be, I think, for this blueprint and this blueprint only. So just be aware that there's multiple time dilation that you can set that way. And then I'm going to duplicate that node and also hook that into the target of our end overlap. Uh, so the value of our custom time dilation is based off 0 to 1. You can go above 1, which increases speed. And being honest here, I've never tested going below 0. So maybe play around with that and have some fun. But to get that effect, I'm going to set the uh, first custom time dilation to 0 0.2 which means it will be at 20% of its normal run speed. And then once it ends, I want it to return to normal speed. So I'm going to set that to 1. And then we're going to hit Compile and save that. And let me delete my other ones so they're out of the way. And we'll just drag out that little bubble here. And we're going to make sure that when I overlap it, nothing happens. And when my projectiles overlap it, they do indeed get slowed. So that is literally how simple that is. This is that uh, slowed projectile time bubble. Uh, the next one we're going to create is that wall explosion that you saw there. Uh, that one requires a destructible mesh. So if you haven't already, you can go ahead and watch that tutorial on how to set that up. Or if you do have one, we can just use that one, which will be great. So I'm going to right click, create another blueprint class, and call this actor. And I'm just going to call this wall explosion. All right, once we open that up, uh, I'm going to add all the components I need first. So I'm going to add my destructible. And I'm going to make sure that's set to my destructible wall. And this is a bug I've been having, where if you set this mesh, it doesn't actually display in your viewport. So what you can do is uh, close that after you've added it. And once you reopen it, you should see that mesh in your viewport again. So once you get that in place, uh, you can rotate that and place that however you like. I'm just going to center mine out a little bit. Uh, next thing, what I like to add, just for personal preference, is I will want to put an arrow there. 
And the reason I'm going to put this arrow there is because I want to know the direction that my wall will be exploding towards. <laughs> Alright, so once I have that arrow there, I'm going to add another component called radial force. And what this will do is this will uh, trigger the impulse of how we want our destructible to explode. So by putting this radial force behind the wall, I will have it explode towards this arrow. And that's also just a little visual cue for anyone uh, doing level design other than yourself to kind of know which way the wall should be facing. Uh, and then the last thing we're going to need to add is a trigger box. So I'm just going to do a box collision. I'll just call it trigger. Uh, and then you can set this however you need it to be set in your world. So if you only want the player to trigger it from running in front of it, uh, then you can set it up like that. I'm going to give mine a little bit wider radius. Okay, that looks good. Uh, now with that set, we can go into our event graph and start creating the chain that's going to give us that slow motion effect. So first we're going to need this trigger, and we're going to start with a begin overlap on that. Uh, now to make sure that the pawn is the only thing that is triggering this, I'm just going to do a other actor. I'm going to cast this to my third person character. And that is just kind of checking it for me to make sure that the character is what, overlapping, is, what is overlapping that trigger. Uh, next, we're going to uh, detonate this wall, essentially. So we're going to get this radial force. Uh, and if you didn't know what I did there, uh, if you have a component selected and you're holding the control key, you can drag that out and just create that variable node without having to go through the get set methods. And off of that, we're just going to fire that impulse. And make sure those execution pins are hooked up. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to use a node called global time dilation. So that is essentially what gives us our slow motion effect. So we're going to set global time dilation. Uh, now, the way that works is it sets everything in the scene, you know, globally, to the speed you've done, and it does stack with other time dilation. So if I were to shoot the projectiles through that slow bubble and then trigger a global, they would then move extremely slow. And I'm not sure if it does it additively or multiplicatively. Uh, but I do think they freeze, so it may be additive. Alright, so after this, to get that uh, slow motion return back to reality, I'm going to add a timeline. And we'll just call this uh, our speed up time. And we'll make sure that execution play is hooked into play from start. Alright, so in this speed up node, uh, I'm going to double click this, and this is our timeline interface. So what we need to do here is we're going to create a new float variable. Uh, and this length up here is how long you want this to last. Uh, I'm just going to rename this speed up again. Oops, don't want to make track. And then to cre create a keyframe on this track, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold shift and click. So I'm going to create two keyframes. And you can edit these values uh, no matter where you create them. You can snap them to places uh, using these two boxes up at the top. So the first variable, I'm going to make sure that it starts at time 0. And I'm going to make sure it has a value of 0.2 since that's what we're setting our global time dilation to in the first place. And then the second one, uh, I want the speed up to take 3 seconds. So I'm going to set the time to 3 seconds. And then the value, I'm going to return it to 1. And then I want the duration of this to be 3. And I'm going to make sure I have this use last keyframe checked. So this is what our timeline looks like. This is a value of 0.2 at time 0, and this is a value of 1 at 3. Uh, and once we have that, we're going to be able to copy this global time dilation node, and we're going to hook up that float variable that we just created. You'll see it's now there. And we're going to plug that into our time dilation, and we're going to hook this into our update. So let's test that out and make sure that's uh, working right now. We're going to hit Compile, Save, and I'm going to go ahead and just drag this into my level, make sure the arrow is facing the correct way. And when we run into it, global time dilation does indeed happen. However, the wall didn't explode. So we're going to have to go in there and mess with our radial force just a little bit. 
Uh, so I'm going to open that back up, bring it back to the screen, and go back into our viewports. I guess you don't really need to, but if you click on this radial force, you'll see all these detail tabs over here. And what I'm going to do is for this fall off, I'm going to change this to linear. Uh, for the object type, you can leave all four of those if you need to. Uh, impulse strength, you can leave it 1000. I'm going to check velocity change because we want it to change velocity. Uh, for strength, I'm going to set that to 500. And then destructible damage, we're going to want to set that to 1 so that it actually does damage to our destruction. Now, if we hit compile and play, our wall is going to explode all over the place. So. And now we're back up to normal speed. Uh, thank you all again. Hope you enjoyed the video and stick around for the next one.